All right. So good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Alberto. I am a software engineer at CSCS. And what I wanted to show you today uh, under this very articulated and probably excessively long title, uh, apologies about that, are some promising initial results that show that if we choose carefully uh, the abstractions and the interfaces between containers and HPC systems, we can actually make our machines more versatile and our workloads more flexible without necessarily compromising in performance even we, when we deal with high-end systems meant, with, uh, meant for leadership computing. Um, so, let me elaborate. <laughs> okay. uh, this work has been, uh, was done, uh, falls into the context of performance portability for containers. Uh, this is an area uh, in which the container team at CSCS and myself, we have worked uh, for, uh, we spent a lot of effort and quite a bit of time working in this. So, to start things off, I, I will uh, I'll give you a quick background on what we mean with performance portability for HPC containers. Then I will go on and present um, lip fabric based techniques for achieving near native MPI performance with containers. I'll show you some benchmarks on Slingshot 11, both synthetic. Uh, point, uh, synthetic benchmarks and real world applications, and then I will just wrap it up with some conclusions. So, performance portability for containers. What do we intend uh, as that? Well, well we, uh, the uh, fundamental goal that we strive towards, that we want to achieve, is to take advantage of the inherent portability of container images. We don't want to rebuild images for each specific system where we want to run them. <laughs> but rather, we want to use an image throughout a whole array of different systems and leveraging the, uh, as efficiently as, uh, and as effectively as possible the performance characteristics of each system. Um, this is attractive not just for users, uh, think about a research group or a development team uh, who could basically reuse the same image throughout all the life cycle of their research activity you know, they, as, as they scale out as, as they scale out the, their computations or this is also true as, as, you, as you go through the development of an application you start small on your laptop then you go you eventually want to get to a supercomputer so this is very attractive for for users, but also uh, would be convenient for HPC centers and HPC staff uh, if you could just reuse container image um, as it is um, even, uh, even after interventions or maintenance is in the system which change the underlying hardware or the core system libraries. Um, so how do we want to move towards this, this goal? So the solutions, the, 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 um, rather the strategy that we've, that we've uh, followed uh, during these years is to augment images with host resources uh, at container creation time. These resources are specialized as the custom as the hardware, uh, the HPC systems present, of course, and are the key enablers for the performance that we know these machines for. So uh, basically he, here, uh, so, yeah, these are the key components for enabling performance. So, for example, a, a system administrator might configure optimized MPI libraries and network devices, or we may, re, uh, we may rely on vendor tools like NVIDIA, to, uh, like the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, to inject GPU driver and GPU devices within, uh, within a container. So, the, point, the, the idea is that the image remains portable, but the container runs as a native HPC process. Um, and the, the, the Cyrus container engine was, developed, was designed and developed for facilitating this kind of 
uh, this kind of behavior, this kind of actions. So this is why you're, you're, see, you're, you're seeing it uh, represented here. But in principle, in principle, these approaches are achievable um, with any container tool. Um, so, it, and within this talk, I will be um, focusing more specifically on the MPI and network fabrics um, bit. So when we talk about <coughs> enabling MPI performance and, expo and exposing native networks, um, ideally, ideally we would like solutions to provide uh, two key properties or traits. One, to be independent from the MPI implementation. Um, because this allows the developers uh, of the application and the builder of the images to choose the best MPI flavor for their applications without constraints. And in turn, this also allows computing providers to accommodate users in their infrastructure regardless of the, chosen, the MPI implementation chosen by the users. Second trait, solutions, ideal solutions should minimize modifications to the container image software stack. And this uh, has been recognized in literature and in experts and from experts in the field as uh, a key uh, property to improve the workflow reproducibility with, with containers. So I have, uh, of course, since we're talking HPC, I am I'm taking it for granted that we also need to run, that we also want to run these containers as fast as possible. So this is why you don't see it um, listed here as, but that's also an ideal trait of a solution. Um, I have like arbitrarily numbered them one and two, uh, so these traits, so keep them in mind because I will reference them over the next uh, few slides. So this is the ideal, the, this is ideally what we want to see. How does it work in reality though? So in reality, what happens is that the most established and most popular approach for unlocking performance in portable generic image, container images is what, is what we can call M, uh, MPI replacement or complete MPI replacement. So the MPI libraries of the container image are completely replaced, completely over, not overwritten, but overshadowed by an optimized host MPI implementation coming from the underlying machine. Um, this approach is implemented in various forms by, by HP, H, HPC tools. Um, in my, in, so um, softwares like Sarus, Charlie Cloud, Shifter, they provide some sort of uh, automation for these kind of tasks. But there is also a good bunch of um, of papers, authors, and practitioners who do this uh, more explicit, um, like a little bit more manually with singularity, container, and you can find you can find a lot of references for that. So the advantages of this approach is that it transparently matches the PMI implementation, so of the of the host. So you can use your um, um, workload, your MPI resource manager straight away. The injected host libraries are usually optimized or even vendor provided, um, so native performance is, is granted by that. And it, this, um, by doing this, it also seamlessly enables complex features not present in the image MPI, think um, RDMA to GPU devices. So a lot of good stuff, but there are some, some significant constraints. Uh, for example, the MPI replacement requires the same MPI family, uh, the same family of MPI implementations on the host and into the container. We cannot bind mount an MPI over an open MPI and vice versa. Um, this also requires ABI compatibility between host and, contain, and image MP, uh, MPIs. And there is a long, long list of dependencies and libraries to inject into the container to make this work. So as you can see, the established approach doesn't, does not at all satisfy the ideal traits of the solutions that we would like to see. So we started looking around in order to improve the situation. And eventually, um, we started looking at LibFabric. If you're not familiar with that, LibFabric defines itself as a framework focused on exporting fabric communication services to applications. 
basically what this means for, for our purposes is that it can act as a middleware between MPA libraries and the, and the network hardware. How is it able to do so? It, uh, uh, because it, on, on one side, on the upside, it provides a unified interface for callers and consumers, while internally under the hood uses optimized code paths and dynamic hardware selection. Um, for uh, d depending on what's the hardware available, it tries to pick the the best fabric for for your pro for your uh, process, and it it is, it is it is able to do so to do this dynamic uh, fabric selection by using internally what is called providers. So providers in the in the context of libfabric are these actual software components which enable access to the specific technologies. And even the open, and, and the Libfabric is open source software, you can find it on GitHub. And there are already a bunch, uh, a good selection of providers for very generic trans, uh, no, sorry, very, very generic technologies like sockets, TCP, UDP, verbs, uh, but even, um, even vendor specific stuff, uh, EFA, Cray GNI, uh, AWS EFA, Cray GNI. So, we want to use uh, libfabric in, in its capacity of a middleware to abstract away the network hardware from the MPI implementation, from the MPI libraries. And so we can formulate a new technique that's called libfabric replacement, where what we replace into the container is not the MPI library, but the rather the libfabric. And we, and we replace it with a libfabric built on the host specifically to access and interact with the uh, network specific providers of that host. Um, by doing so, we have a hardware matching libfabric provider within the, uh, within the container that provides near native performance because we're actually accessing properly the network interface. It is MPI implementation agnostic. It supports both MPIC and OpenMPI. It also preserves the original uh, image MPI and ABI interfaces between the applications because we're not touching the MPI anymore. And there are, and also reduces significantly the number of dependencies to inject. So compared to the MPI, complete MPI replacement, here we are, this, this technique is satisfying both the traits that we ideally want to see to enable performance portability of containers. There are, uh, there are a few, it's not a perfect solution, there are a few cons here, there are a few drawbacks as well. Um, we need to buy, we need to build MPI with libfabric support. We also need to satisfy libfabric ABI compatibility and some PMI compatibility, but um, these are all, um, I, I will not get into the details of those for the sake of time, but these are all very minor, and, and not, not very minor, but significantly less impactful than the limitations of the established approach. And uh, they can be worked around fairly, fairly easily. Arguably, the greatest, the, the greatest concern about this technique is that some vendor-specific MPI optimizations might not be available. Emphasis on, emphasis on may not be available. So we, and we will see later. So question we might ask right now is, okay, this, this sounds like an okay idea, but does it actually work? Yes, yes. We tried it. It does work. Um, myself and my colleague Tomas from uh, CSCS, we put together a paper uh, with all describing in detail these approaches and providing experimental validation. And it was published last year at the Canopy HPC workshop, which runs tied to supercomputing. Um, so, if you're interested, if you, if you want to know more about this, all the details, please refer, uh, have, a look at, have a look at this paper, have a look at our work. Um, just for reference, here in the slide, I have uh, here, what we're seeing here, it's an uh, open MPI container with libfabric uh, and, and running Romax on pits dined at basically identical or very close performance with 
uh, with the native implementation. So we tried this and we validated this on Pitsdynt, which is the so is currently the flagship supercomputer for the, uh, the, the flagship system for the National Supercomputing Service at CSCS. So it's pretty much, it, it, it is the present of CSCS, but in some sense, it's also the, the past at CSCS because Pitsdynt has been running in its cur current form since 2016, more or less. So what's the future uh, for CSCS? Well, as you heard from uh, Felipe and Maxime over the past couple of days. The future of CSCS is the Alps research infrastructure. And prominently, the Alps infrastructure is, um, is characterized by an HP Cray EX supercomputer and also an HP Slingshot high speed interconnect. So Pitsdynt is an ARIES, previous generation Cray Interconnect, and Alps will feature the brand new HP Slingshot. So now the question becomes, can we actually leverage, can we run LibFabric replacement on Slingshot? Well, that's what we're here to find out, right? Okay, okay. So let's set up some experiments. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm taking the CPU production partition of the Alps infrastructure. Not all of it, of course. I'm a I try to be a responsible user. Uh, so this is an HP Cray EX supercomputer at C running at CSCS. The compute nodes of this partition uh, um, showcase a, or rather, sport a dual AMD Epic 7742 64 core CPU. They have the HP Slingshot 11 interconnect the Dragonfly topology. And very interestingly, um, HP chose to implement the software stack of the Slingshot Interconnect using LibFabric. Uh, and so the system comes with a vendor provided LibFabric with a custom provider for Slingshot 11. On top of this uh, lies the native Cray Ampitch 8.1, and for these experiments, I'll be using the Sarus container engine, uh, version 1.5.1. So I'll be, uh, I'll be showing you results with several different container images. They, all, they come with different applications, but all of them have these, uh, share these, like, these characteristics. All of them are on Ubuntu 22.04, Libfabric 1.14.1 compiled inside the container, and one of the following MPI, and one of three MPI implementations. I'm going to run on OpenMPI 4.1, MPitch 4.1, and the alpha release of MVAPitch 2 3.0, but this one only for the synthetic benchmarks. So basically these are, uh, I try to be as neutral and as uh, to make these images as generic as possible. There is basically nothing meant uh, for an HPC systems in these container images, besides the fact that they have an MPI. Um, so, how is how is how, are, um, how is this going to look? Uh, what what we're about to do with these containers? So, j just to refresh and um, the memory and, and visualize it better with a with a diagram that I've shown a few slides ago. We have the image MPI libraries. They said they are built with the image software stack and compiler, um, one of the three implementations. And the interesting things, uh, the interesting thing, uh, or rather one thing to note about these implementations is that while MPitch 4.1 and MVAPitch 3.0 uh, introduce support for Slingshot 11, so this is one of the highlights in their, in their change sets, OpenMPI 4.1 has no clue what Slingshot is. So this will be interesting uh, to, see to see what happens. Below the MPI libraries, we're going to inject the, uh, the host lib fabric to replace the lib fabric in the image. And uh, this will be the vendor provided lib fabric. While on Pitsdynt and on Cray XC, um, we, um, 
Cray did not provide a libfabric, but I could build myself the open source libfabric with the GNI provider to access the areas network. The interesting thing is that now we have a vendor provided libfabric. So that basically means that, uh, which is also used by the native Cray MPitch. So this basically means that the MPI in the images and the native MPI will both access the network hardware through the same software layer. So this, is, um, uh, this enables some interesting comparisons because the software step, because um, if we are careful enough of matching the versions of the applications and the versions of the compiler, this means that we can get up fairly, not exact, there, is a lot of, there are a lot of uncertainties as well, but fa uh, fairly equal comparison ground for different MPI applications. But enough, uh, enough theory, let's see some plots. Okay, so first, some point-to-point -point synthetic benchmarks, um, which basically means OZU. <laughs> I, I, uh, I wanted to thank uh, EK Panda for all the work that he and his team have done on, on these very useful tools over the years, but it seems he's not here today. That's too bad. So, well, let's get to it. So, first of all, of all uh, la latency, point-to-point uh, -point latency test. Um, sorry if maybe the, the, the plot is that the numbers are a little bit uh, small, but uh, we have the Cray, uh, the, Cray, the native Cray uh, MPitch software in green, container with MPitch in orange, container with MVAPitch in red, and container with OpenMPI uh, in blue. Um, I don't know how clear, but you, uh, um, I can assure you there are four colors and four data series in this plot, even if it's difficult to see. Um, I, uh, I probably I should have zoomed more, but uh, the results are pretty consistent and pretty close together. Um, we might we, we see just the native Cray, the, the native um, Cray and pitch uh, having a better result at eight or eight k or sixteen k message size, but for all the other message sizes, latency is pretty much identical. So this is a pretty promising start. Let's move over to some bandwidth, and here. We see pretty much the same thing. Besides some sl ever so slight advantage at 8K and 16K, the bandwidth between containers and the native and the native software is mm, all perfectly matching. Uh, and we even the logarithmic scale in the plot uh, also allows us to appreciate this roof uh, roof line like uh, behavior. Bidirectional bandwidth, pretty much the same story. No, this is not the same plot, I can assure you. Uh, this basically, uh, we go almost at double the, the bandwidth and the behavior is the same. The consistency between the MPI implementations is the same. All right, let's move to some real world applications because that's what matters in the end, especially for, for users. Starting off with Gromax. Some uh, classic, this classical molecular dynamic software, very popular in um, in uh, scientific communities, in computational chemistry. The uh, the test case is the Gromax test case B from the Praise Unified Applications Benchmark Suites. We run from four nodes up to 128 nodes, and the, uh, we can observe that the native variant of the software is slightly ahead at all node counts, so there's still a slight advantage um, for, for the native implementation, but the containers are hot on, their, on its heels. They are training it pretty, pretty close, uh, so the, the, the difference is not, is not that much. Next, I have SPH EXA. This is a, a highly performant, highly scalable, smooth particle hydrodynamics code developed in the context of the PRAISE project uh, by several partners um, for the University of Basel, CSCS, and several others. 
Um, the test case uh, here, uh, the test case is a set of spherical blast wave. Um, once again, very good overlapping and basically almost identical performance at all node counts. Maybe the containers uh, just a tiny, tiny bit better at 128 nodes. Uh, moving over to PyFR. This is a Python-based CFD code implementing the Flux reconstruction scheme. Um, it was a Gordon Bell finalist in 2016. It has, be, it has been demonstrated to scale really well on uh, HPC systems. Um, a test case here is an SD7003 airfoil simulation. Uh, which comes from a, a publication from the developer team of PyFR. Same story again. So, identical performance up to 32 nodes, and the containers also edge out uh, slightly the native uh, the native variant at 64 no, at the highest node count that we have here, 64 nodes. So, from what we've seen this far, we might ask. Does it always work? Is it really that good? Um, it's not all roses, unfortunately. Um, for example, if we see, uh, if we take into consideration Quantum Espresso, uh, another very popular electronic structure computation package, we start to see some, some things which could have gone better, let's say. First of all, I wasn't able to get an open MPI image working. So this is why uh, we only have a MPitch 4.1 container here. Uh, and while this container, this lonely lone survivor, let's say, from the build process, starts off very, very well, um, edge, uh, like performing almost 20% better than the native, than the native uh, software, it only are, uh, scales up to 32 nodes and starts crashing um, at higher node counts. So um, while the native counterpart is able to start and complete jobs even, be, be, even, uh, even beyond that limit. Now, maybe for, for the sake of this example and for the sake of total performance, that might not make sense, but uh, I just plotted the, the native numbers at 64 and 128 nodes just to show that uh, the software runs, it's just the container starts to, to, have some, to have some problems. Interface probably is something with the, the way the MPI or the lib fabric uh, this, uh, is deserves more investigation, of course. Um, another example is CP2K. It's another very popular quantum chemistry and solid state physics code. Uh, here, the test case is a linear scaling is 2,048 uh, water molecules in a linear scaling DFT computation. And here, I wasn't able to get an MPitch container to work, so I have only numbers for an MPI container. And what we see is that the container performs quite well, up to 16 nodes, and then abruptly slows down, and for all other node counts, performs about uh, two times slower than the native application. So we might, we might think that maybe it's not using uh, the, the right lib fabric provider, it's not accessing the slingshot network, but no, uh, actually, it is able to leverage in some measure the, the native lib fabric because if, because if we look at the purple, uh, the purple lines of the purple series, that's the same container without lib fabric replacement. And then the, and there the numbers just whoo, skyrocket in, in, in execution time. Um, so in this case, what we can see is that while li uh, lib fabric replacement is not enabling near native performance, it is, it is any way better than not having it. It is, it is still a substantial performance boost. So, let's say wrapping it up. Oh, seems like I'm not doing bad on time. <laughs> I might 
this is this is a new experience for me actually not having time problems so i'm very happy about that um, some conclusion what, what can we say about the the the, uh, the the number the results that we have seen well lip fabric uh, i'd say the lip fabric replacement can work on slingshot 11 using hp's proprietary lip fabric it is compatible with different containerized mpis it reduces the complexity com the complexity of injection and of container customization compared to the full MPI replacement approach, and as we have seen, uh, enables near native performance. However, right now it does not always work. Um, the outcome depends on application, use cases, MPI implementations. So, depending on what's the mixture here, uh, yeah, this is, uh, your mileage may may vary. You might get something different. Um, another key takeaway from this experience uh, that I would personally add is that uh, this shows that communication frameworks think, not just LibFabric, but also think about UCX, uh, they have great potential, they have great, great potential for containers in HPC. They can do a lot of good stuff and they really deserve more consideration. Um, MPIs are still going to be a key element in the software stacks. Um, we should still very much uh, put attention on our MPIs, but I think that when we when we deal with containers and think about deploying building and deploying containers on HPC machines, we should we should really start thinking also about communication frameworks and st and stop worrying or at least worry a little bit less about oh my god oh my god what kind of uh, MPI should I put here in order to run on that machine. So, future work. More testing up ahead, of course. There is still a lot of ground to be covered, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, to be explored. Um, I would like to see more applications. I would like to test, also myself, more, uh, more scientific applications and more test cases just to better map off this envelope of, uh, of what happens with this approach. And I, I'm also very interested in following the MPI, the, the results we, that we can get with MPI impl implementations as they develop, like OpenMPI 5 uh, supposedly in, all introduces officially support for Slingshot 11, uh, at least that's what I'm hearing. Um, and a lot of the Slingshot 11 efforts uh, in the OpenMPI context have, are, have been targeted and directed to OpenMPI 5. So um, that's very exciting, waiting for that to come out. MPH4, uh, MPH Series 4, 4.1 was the first uh, release with uh, Slingshot 11 support. Let's see, what, uh, let, let's see if, they can, uh, if, if they can improve further. And also waiting for the general release of MPH 3.0, MPH 2 3.0, because what we have tested here is just an alpha release, not even beta, just alpha release. Um, we would like also to consolidate this approach and integrate it into user-facing tools, uh, actually getting this in the hands of our users at CSCS uh, is one of the key aspects is one of the most important outcomes of, uh, of this, this, this experience and to improve the life of our users as much as possible. And also explore, we, uh, I would like to explore more complex use cases um, like uh, getting, into, uh, getting into uncharted territory here, uh, like at least for the ground that we have not explored yet with, uh, with these experiments. So I'm thinking about communication collectives libraries. These are your Nichols, your Rickles, is that Rickle? RC anyway, it's, it's an opinion, RCCL. Um, the communication, optimized communication collectives by GPU vendors, NVIDIA, AMD, or whatever. And of course, uh, last but definitely not least, RDMA, uh, GPU Direct for NVIDIA, other solutions for vendors and whatnot. 
Um, okay, so few last uh, couple of words of, uh, of acknowledgements. I would like to thank very, very much my colleagues Sebastian and Anton at CSCS for helping me selecting and getting the test cases for SPH EXA and Quantum Espresso respectively to run as uh, their support was much appreciated and yeah that's all for me today uh, thank you thank you very very much for your attention So what I'm seeing, uh, what, what I'm plotting here, it's actual simulation time. It is. It doesn't take into account of the lo of the of the loading time. So I wouldn't factor uh, loading time and uh, like the delays between Pyth loading Python libraries and that kind of stuff. So this is just the actual simulation running time. Probably, probably. The container is also faster at startup because this is what has been demonstrated even years ago um, for, for HPC containers leveraging squash FS mounting like Cyrus is able to do here. Um, and this was uh, actually uh, loading very complex Python software stacks was one of the key motivators for HPC container tools. Um, but besides that, it would be, it, it is very diff it would be not very difficult, but significantly more difficult to benchmark that specifically on, uh, on an application like PyFR. Because I try to base my data as much as possible from the, what the application itself is reporting. And PyFR only starts reporting runtime data when it's actually running the CFD simulation. PyFR is a code based on, dy um, on dynamic code generation. so. The simulation is not actually run by Python. Uh, the, the Python code generates at runtime uh, optimized kernels for the architecture that it runs to. In this case, I'm open, uh, using an OpenMP backend, but uh, PyFR also has a CUDA backend. So it spends some t It doesn't start right away. It's, it has to spend some time in order to generate and compile those kernels. So this is another thing to take into consideration when you benchmark PyFR. The performance that you see in the simulation is not the total runtime of the application. You, you might argue that if you launch a, a six-hour simulation, it doesn't really matter if you spend 30 or 40 seconds waiting for a kernel compilation. But. Um, no, no, I, I think that's, that's too small. It, it depends. Every application has a different usage pattern. Um, I, I would, I, uh, this would have to be better understood in follow-up work. My guess is the way uh, this, uh, the, the interaction between the MPIs and the libfabric, because there are a lot of details, a lot of parameters that you can do with you. Um, you can use with with slingshot, and the most obvious thing that we can think is that the native MPI knows exactly what is dealing with with the, at the level of the hardware's, and maybe the open source MPIs that I'm using in the containers are not that smart yet. Question mark. Yes. Yes. No, no, def definitely, definitely. Um, um, is, uh, this is just the first step in the, the first exploration attempt. In this case, um, it has to be understood how to work with between uh, libfabric and GPUs. How to, uh, uh, like, as I said in future work, how to access nickel. How to work with uh, probably with with uh, because uh, GPU with GPU aware. Uh, MPI, 
Definitely yes, but if, we, if you take into consideration what we did on Pitts Dined, this is a GPU accelerated code. It's just not using CUDA, uh, CUDA Wear MPI, but this is using the GPUs and regular MPI. Yes. Okay, 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 fair enough, fair enough. But, but yes, uh, this, has to be, this has to be understood. <laughs> Arguably, if we, if we were able to, uh, to also adopt this approach on something like UCX, maybe, uh, or probably, uh, accessing advanced GPU features would be easier. But, that, that's, another, but that's, that's another completely different discussion. No, not completely different, but that's another discussion. But um, just as a note on your first point, I would actually love to work to experiment with UCX as well. I have already also contacted the, I have already had some exchanges with the UCX development team uh, to understand. Uh, th there are some things I can do with the libfabric and I cannot yet do with UCX and vice versa. There are some things that with UCX would be transparent, as you said, our DMA access and with the libfabric would be much more difficult. But. I, I just pick individual benchmarks. I, I, I would have liked to also present uh, collective results, but uh, fortunately I was kind of constrained in the allocation I could get on the machine and I chose to like, okay, get some point-to-point -point benchmarks that just validate this and then move on to the real applications because that's usually what people are most interested about, what people most care about. But, Yeah, yeah. For, for, for example, I have discussed uh, with, uh, with a colleague of mine who knows uh, quite a lot about Gromax, and he said to me that Gromax is much more sensible to latency and almost doesn't care about bandwidth. So um, if we get uh, two, open MP, two, two MPI implementations that can reasonably match uh, each other on latency, even if they have different bandwidth, we would see a very, very similar performance on Gromax. But this is completely application dependent. Applications might be sensible, latency, bandwidth. They might use different message sizes. It depends on the computation pattern. It depends on the test case. Maybe depending on the test case, we exercise different code paths and different computation patterns within the application. So that's what I said. Like Our, our mileage are, may vary and I would like to start filling those gaps and understand more. Something like, something like that, once. And second is that, as far as I know, right now there, are no, there is not a UCX backend for Slingshot 11. So, and by the way, Lib fabric is I got that for free from from the system, so that made things easier. Thank you.